Hello everyone and welcome back for some more Drag Race gossip, secrets and drama. Today we're going to be discussing whether some queens are doomed to fail on Drag Race in certain challenges, including Thorgy Thor, Katya and Cameron Michaels among others. All that and more coming up in today's video, so let's get started. Please note that because we're going to be talking about the outcome of certain episodes of Drag Race, there is a spoiler alert in place for this video. So, as we all know, Drag Race is a high pressure environment, and each challenge is designed to play to a certain queen's strength more than others. If you're a fashion slash design queen, you're more likely to do well in the design challenges, and if you're a comedy queen, you're more likely to do well in snatch game or acting challenges. But one of the things that I've noticed over the years of watching Drag Race is that in the main challenges, there are always certain roles that seem doomed to fail from the start, regardless of which queen takes on that role. So I thought I would investigate a few different examples of this that have happened on Drag Race and discuss whether or not these queens were doomed to fail. Thorgy Thor Thorgy Thor competed on season 8 of Drag Race US and then went on to compete in All Stars 3. Throughout her time on both seasons, Thorgy was portrayed as being a bit paranoid and the producers seemed to push this storyline that Thorgy felt as though she was being disadvantaged in some way. And on a certain level, I do agree that Thorgy was not treated fairly on both seasons. When I think about queens who are doomed to fail in a particular challenge, one of the first examples I think of is Thorgy Thor during the Divas Live lip sync in episode 2 of All Stars 3. For the challenge, each of the queens were assigned a different diva slash gay icon to portray during a pre-recorded lip sync challenge where they sung RuPaul's songs in the style of that diva. The divas included Mariah Carey, Julie Andrews and Diana Ross among others. Thorgy Thor was assigned Stevie Nicks. For anyone who doesn't know, Stevie Nicks is a singer who was part of the band Fleetwood Mac and she also went on to have a successful solo career. During the challenge, Thorgy made several comments saying that although Stevie Nicks is a gay icon and a diva, she is not as well known as some of the other divas in the challenge, such as Mariah Carey. Thorgy also made the point that Stevie Nicks is not well known for having a big personality or particular mannerisms that are easy to copy like some of the other divas. And to a large extent I do agree with Thorgy. Although I knew the name Stevie Nicks, I was definitely not as familiar with her work as I was with some of the other queens like Mariah Carey or Celine Dion. In fact, during the episode, Thorgy even said to Shangela in the workroom that her lines during the lip sync weren't as funny as Shangela's and that she felt as though she was being set up to fail. There is no way because I'm Stevie, I'm ever gonna win this. I feel like I'm being set up to fail. But Shangela disagreed with Thorgy and said that it was all down to the performance and that Shangela could make any role funny. And although I can see Shangela's point, I do think that Thorgy's role was more difficult and her lip sync was also not very funny. If we look at the lyrics for Thorgy's part of the lip sync, the lyrics to that particular RuPaul song, which is Born Naked, the lyrics just aren't funny and they don't really leave much room for any jokes. If we compare that to the lyrics for Shangela's part as Mariah Carey, we can see that there are actual jokes. The RuPaul song that Shangela lip synced to was The Realness, but there were lots of extra lines added between the lyrics that contained actual jokes. For example, the Happy New Year part was a reference to Mariah's infamous New Year's performance where her mic stopped working. This what you oh Happy New Year, everybody. <laughs> Guess we're going over here. Let's let the audience sing along. <laughs> There is also the part that says, can I get more of me? And also, someone's getting fired, which all feed into the stereotype that Mariah is a diva. And as another example, if we look at the lyrics for Ben de la Creme's part as Julie Andrews, the lyrics included many funny and rude words because they come from the RuPaul song, Call Me Mother. And this is just inherently funny because Julie Andrews is a refined British older lady, so to hear her voice saying all of these obscene lyrics is just funny, even without needing to say actual jokes. 
So not only is Stevie Nicks not as well known as some of the other divas, but the actual lyrics to the song, which the queens were assigned, were also not very fairly distributed with jokes. And it seems like one or two of the queens got all the jokes and the rest of the queens got hardly any jokes. And I do agree that perhaps Thorgy could have pushed her performance a little bit further as Stevie Nicks, but I still don't think that would actually have helped ultimately. For example, Aja said that there is a rumour that Stevie Nicks is a witch, so if she had had the role, she would have come out with a broom and a wand and played into that stereotype. But Thorgy didn't want to do that because she wanted to stay true to the real character of Stevie Nicks. I also think there was some shady editing during the main stage critiques to feed into this narrative against Thorgy. For example, they cut to Thorgy saying that Stevie Nicks isn't a gay icon, and then they show RuPaul disagreeing with her. It's not like a gay icon. Stevie Nicks is definitely a gay icon. However, I think it's obvious that Thorgy said something more than that, but they just cut off the rest of her sentence. Thorgy even confirmed this during an interview with Billboard, where she clarified what she actually said was, quote, Stevie Nicks is not a gay icon who can win at a gay drag queen competition next to the divas in this challenge. But they cut off the last part of her sentence, which made it sound like she was saying something different than she actually was. And even the guest judge for that episode, Vanessa Williams, said that Stevie Nicks was a harder character to do. I think Stevie Nicks was a hard diva to do. I'm trying to keep my mouth shut because I don't like, I don't want to make any excuses. And I assume they showed this part to try and feed into the narrative that Thorgy is paranoid and is always complaining. And then Vanessa shrugged, which implied as though she was fed up with Thorgy, but I don't think that's actually how it happened if you watch the edit. It's, it's, not, a, it's not like a gay icon. So, all in all, I do think that Thorgy was doomed to fail in this particular challenge, so it's not a huge surprise that she was eliminated at the end of this episode. And I think if the roles had been reversed and Thorgy had played Mariah Carey and Shangela had portrayed Stevie Nicks, I think the outcome of the episode would have been different. Katya. Please make sure you hit subscribe and ring the bell to be notified for my future videos. Katia competed on Season 7 of Drag Race US and also competed on All Stars 2. Katia is another example of a queen who I think of when it comes to being doomed to fail, particularly during the Episode 3 challenge on All Stars 2, which was the Herstory of the World Rusical. Each of the queens was assigned to portray a different legendary woman from history and perform a pre-recorded lip sync track. The women included Annie Oakley, Marie Antoinette and Catherine the Great among others. Katia was assigned the role of Diana, Princess of Wales. And I think Katia ran into a similar problem that Thorgy Thor did during the All Stars 3 Diva Live Lip Sync Challenge. Although Princess Diana is a very recognisable person, her part in the ruse call was just not as funny as the other queens. If we look at the lyrics for Katia's part as Princess Diana, there just aren't many jokes. The only funny line is, quote, and then the bleep hit the fan, I got divorced from my man. But the rest of the lyrics just aren't funny, and if anything, they come off as being a bit tragic. If we compare that to the lyrics of Alyssa Edwards' part as Annie Oakley, we can see that in Alyssa's part, there are quite a few actual jokes in the lyrics. For example, the line, quote, came out my mama with a gun, and also the repeated line of the words bang bang coupled with the dance routine was already a funny line and set Alyssa up to be in the top. And this is also true for Detox's part as Marie Antoinette, who didn't really have many lyrics apart from the famous line of let them eat cake, but this was coupled with funny choreography. So it's no surprise that Alyssa and Detox were the top two that week and Katia was in the bottom. Obviously you could also argue that Alyssa and Detox were in the top for that challenge because they performed their roles well, which is true, but I think if the role you get assigned already has funny lyrics, it definitely helps to secure a top placement in that challenge. And the other thing that Katia was criticised for was the outfit that she wore for Princess Diana. Michelle said that she didn't think that the hair was right and that the dress needed a really long train. However, Katia has since said in interviews that she did intend on wearing a longer train, but it was impossible to dance in, so she had to make the train shorter. And we can even tell that the judges realised that Katia was being unfairly judged, because RuPaul made the point that... Now, in Katia's defence, Princess Diana is really the only figure that we remember what she looked like. The other characters were open to interpretation. 
It's also harder to make a role funny when you're portraying someone who died relatively recently in historical terms and in quite tragic circumstances like Princess Diana. So to me, this was just another example of when a queen is assigned a lip sync role that is just doomed to fail, or at least not a role that they can win with, because it just isn't as funny as some of the other roles. And this is evidenced by the fact that Katya was in the bottom two for this episode, but then did well in nearly every other challenge and made it to the top four. Ocean Aqua Black Ocean Aqua Black competed on season two of Canada's Drag Race. I think Oceane is a perfect example of a queen who gets assigned a role that is doomed to fail because of the lack of material and very little screen time. I'm talking specifically about the episode 2 challenge, which was the Under the Big Top Rusical. Many of you will remember this challenge because of Eve 6000's iconic moment of I got a trick up my sleeve. I got a trick up my sleeve, a stunt that the crowd won't be. Leave. However, I want to talk about Ocean's role in the Rusical. Ocean played the role of Bong, which was part of a trio called Bing Bang Bong, which was a reference to the Drag Race UK Season 2 Rurovision song. In the Rusical, it was clear that whoever was going to be in the trio was not going to win because they had very few lines, the lines they did have just weren't funny, and they hardly had any screen time. If we look at Ocean's role, she only had a handful of lines in the whole rusical, and most of her lines were shared with two other people. And in fact, Ocean, as well as Suki Doll, who was also in the trio, both placed low that week, and the other member of the trio, Adriana, was just safe which clearly shows that none of these three queens were going to do well or be in the top because of the roles they were assigned. In fact, when I interviewed Ocean on my channel, she even said that she felt like this was a role that was set up to make someone fail. That I think those three are the hardest roles because they're not really, you have to be in sync and they didn't really have like funny lines. Yeah, you know what I'm. What I think, I think like looking back at it right now, it's I think about it very differently. But um, looking back at it now, I'm thinking that this was um, the role to make someone fail. You know what I mean? And to have a perfect sync with three people, it's kind of impossible. I don't think it's possible. And even Judge Brooklyn Heights admitted that the role of the trio was the hardest because it had the most amount of group work. But I think with musical and acting challenges, where the lines are pre-written, the writers must know that a particular role is going to be harder than others, which means that it's nearly impossible to win that challenge, which seems unfair. So I think the writers of these challenges need to try and write roles that allow everyone an opportunity to shine, because we know it can be done. For example, in the season 14 acting challenge, The Daytona Wind, pretty much every character had some funny lines, which is why there were no bottoms that week because everyone did well, which shows that this can be done if the writers do a good job of spreading the jokes between all the characters. Cherry Valentine Cherry Valentine competed on season 2 of Drag Race UK. Before I start, I would just like to offer my condolences on the shocking news that was announced today that Cherry Valentine has sadly passed away. I planned to include her in this video weeks ago, and I was very shocked when the news came out today that Cherry had suddenly passed away. I love Cherry on the show, and she seemed like such a lovely and talented queen. She will be greatly missed, and I'm sure you'll agree with me when I say that our thoughts go out to Cherry's family and friends during this difficult time. So, going back to the topic of today's video, I feel like Cherry was given a role that doomed her to fail during the second episode, which was the Rats the Rusical Challenge. In the episode, the queens were assigned roles in the musical Rats, which is a parody of the famous musical Cats, and the queens had to act and sing live. In the episode, Cherry really wanted the role of Evita von Fleas, which was the main character in the Rusical. Cherry said that she was experienced at musical theatre, and some of the other queens agreed and said that Cherry would be good in that role. However, Veronica Green was ultimately given the role of Evita by Tia Coffey, who was in charge of assigning the roles. Cherry ended up being given the role of Rat Pack No. 2, which was part of a trio that included Sister Sister and Lawrence Chaney, who played Rat Pack No. 1 and No. 3 respectively. 
I think Cherry fell into the same trap that Ocean Aqua Black did during the Under the Big Top Rusical, where she was part of a trio. Not only do trios usually have the fewest lines, but it's also much harder to stand out when you're part of a group. And this is also evidenced by the fact that Sister Sister placed safe that episode, and Lawrence Cheney was also safe, but only just avoided being in the bottom, which shows that none of the members of the trio were going to rank very highly in that episode. Ultimately, Cherry landed in the bottom and was eliminated. Cherry even said in an interview after Drag Race that if she had been given the role that she wanted of Evita von Fleas, that she would have won the challenge. It's obviously impossible to say what would have happened if Cherry had played the main role, but I think it's safe to say that she would have likely not ended up in the bottom had she been given more of a prominent role. The character of Evita featured a lot of singing, and it also included the visual gag of the multiple nipple tassels and pole dancing. So although I do agree that Veronica did a very good job in her performance, and she definitely deserved the win, I think whoever played that role would probably have been at least safe, because the role was just inherently funny and had the most screen time. Ruko's Empire Ruko's Empire was an acting challenge that took place in episode 3 of Drag Race US season 8. In the episode, the queens had to split into two groups, and each group played the same set of characters in a TV pilot called Ruko's Empire, which is a parody of the TV show Empire. To me, this challenge is a perfect example of how landing the right role can set you up to be in the bottom or in the top. For example, the two top queens that week were Bob the Drag Queen and Thorgy Thor, with Bob ultimately taking the win. But Bob and Thorgy both played the same role of Chocolate Chip Cookie, and it was obvious that this character had the funniest lines and was the main character in both scenes. Not to take anything away from Bob or Thorgy, because they both did an amazing job, but it was hardly surprising that these two were in the top that week, because their characters had the best lines across both scenes. On the flip side of that, the bottom two for that week were Robbie Turner and Cynthia Lee Fontaine. Although they played different characters, both of them were assigned arguably the hardest characters to make funny. For example, Robbie Turner was assigned Macaroon, who was supposed to have a split personality and be slightly psychotic. I think Robbie landed in the bottom two in this particular instance, not because of the material or the role, but because she got in her head. And this is supported by the fact that Acid Betty played the character on the other team, and she placed high that week because she managed to make that character funny. But on the other hand, Cynthia Lee Fontaine was assigned the role of Ginger Snap, who is a militant lesbian with a secret. This role was just a bit weird in my opinion, and didn't make much sense within the context of the scene, and the jokes just weren't that funny. And so it's hardly surprising that both Cynthia and also Derek Barry, who played the same character on the other team, both placed low that week in the ranking. This means that the two queens with the opposing leading roles were in the top that week, and the two queens with the opposing smaller and harder roles were both placed low that week. So this is just another example of when the script writers, in my opinion, need to try and create roles that allow all the queens an opportunity to shine. I understand that the show wants to create conflict and struggle with the queens, but you can still have that while allowing each queen the opportunity to do well in the challenge. Cameron Michaels Cameron Michaels competed in season 10 of Drag Race US. The episode I want to focus on for Cameron is the episode 9 acting challenge Breast World, which is a parody of the TV show Westworld. I think this challenge was quite heavily criticised by fans in general, and this is evidenced by the fact that the episode has the second lowest score of the season on IMDb. I think this is because the script just wasn't very funny and the whole scene didn't really make much sense. Perhaps it makes sense if you're familiar with the show Westworld, but I'll be honest and say that I've never seen Westworld, so I think that there were perhaps lots of references that I just didn't get. But the role I want to focus on is Cameron Michaels' role as Muffy. This role was arguably the main character, so unlike some of the other roles I've talked about in this video, the problem was not to do with the amount of screen time. For me, the problem with this role is just that it wasn't funny, and I think anyone would find it difficult to succeed in this role, especially Cameron who is not an experienced actor. And this just highlights the issue that often, the main character of a show isn't the funniest character, because they have to be the serious one who holds the storyline together. We can see this in other TV shows, such as Will and Grace. 
Will and Grace are arguably the main characters of the show, but the more minor characters such as Jack, Karen and Rosario actually have the funniest lines even though they're not the main characters. And I think this is where Cameron Michaels was sort of doomed to fail in this role in Breastworld. Her character was just the typical whiny, uptight character who had very few actual jokes throughout the scene and there was just nowhere really to go with this character. On the other hand, Asia O'Hara's character of Para Salin only had a few lines but they were actually funny and Asia ended up winning the episode. And again, I don't want to discredit Asia because she did do a really good job in that role, but I think if you had switched Asia and Cameron's roles, Asia would probably have placed lower in the challenge and would probably not have won, which to me just highlights how unfairly written some of the challenges are and therefore dooms some queens to fail. So there you go, there were some examples of queens who, in my opinion, were doomed to fail on Drag Race because of the roles they were assigned. Do you agree with this list? And are there any other queens you think should have been included in this list? Let me know in the comments. As usual, please make sure you subscribe to my channel if you liked this video. And if you could please like, comment or share this video, it would really help to boost the algorithm and promote my video to more people. It's a quick and easy way to show support for my channel and I'd really appreciate it. Please make sure you also follow me on Instagram where I post exclusive did you know fun facts and I also post interactive quizzes and polls in my Instagram stories where you can also interact with other drag race queens and look at their replies. So make sure you follow me at drag tea served on Instagram for some extra content that you won't see on YouTube. Thanks for watching and I hope you'll join me again in future videos. Thank you, bye!